when it comes to building games on Python, there is one engine that appears to reign supreme. With all these videos out there, we should probably crown Pygame as the best game engine for Python. Stop. Before we do, there's another that I think is worthy of consideration. And its name? Piglet. Or is it Piglet? I, I can never really tell when it comes to Python libraries. Naming issues aside, I'm going to dive into what Piglet offers and show you why it's worth considering as the best Python game engine, at least when compared to Pygame. Piglet can be installed using either pip or the operating system's package manager. With Piglet installed, it's five lines of code to get a window running, a breath of fresh air when compared to Pygame's boilerplate. Piglet has support for simple shapes, such as rectangles and circles, as well as more advanced shapes, such as stars and arcs. I really enjoy how in Piglet, shapes are considered objects, which reduces the complexity when having to draw them. Layered drawing can also be achieved using batchain and ordered groups, which can then be used to create more complex components, such as health or mana bars. Whilst drawing shapes is pretty dope, most games will want to draw images, also called sprites, to the screen. Piglet provides functionality to load images from the disk and has native support for PNG and bitmap without needing any external dependencies. Loaded images can then be drawn directly to the screen using the blit method. An image can also be loaded into a sprite, which in turn can be drawn to the screen as part of a batch. Loading into a sprite enables further transformations that can take place, such as scaling or rotation. Animations can add a level of immersion to games that purely static images can find hard to achieve. Piglet has simple support for loading and drawing animations, which can sometimes be a more complex task in other engines. The easiest way to load an animation in Piglet is to load in a GIF, and with a couple of lines of code, an animated sprite is born. A more robust approach, however, is to load the animation from either a sprite sheet or an image sequence. Loading from an image sequence requires us to load each image from disk into an animation frame. Setting the anchor point of each image to the center allows us to have an easier time when drawing the animation. We can also adjust the duration time to change the playback speed of the animation. Then it's just about loading the frames into the animation and setting it as the sprite's image. The update loop is where the magic happens in a game. It is responsible for updating the game state each tick. Implementation-wise, it's typically nothing more exciting than a rate-limited for loop. When it comes to Piglet, however, the update loop is a really well-designed feature. Piglet uses the concept of scheduled functions, in which you pass in your update function and the max rate of which you want the function to be called, typically 1 60th of a second. This function is then called with the delta time since the last call took place, which is used to ensure smooth animation and movement across a variable frame rate. When people talk about how the little things matter in life, this is a perfect example. Input is an integral part of what makes a game playable and interactive. Piglet has support for handling input from the keyboard, mouse, and even game controllers. The preferred method for handling movement in a game when using the keyboard is to refer to a key state, which represents the current state of the keyboard's keys. By checking for the keys we care about, we can update the movement of our goblin in respect to which keys are currently pressed. Games often require a means to communicate with the player, and text is a great way to do so. Piglet provides the ability to draw text using labels. Similar to shapes and sprites, labels are also a first-class object which enables transformations to be applied, such as rotation. Anyone who has played a game with buggy audio knows how important sound is to the immersive experience. Piglet provides support for many audio formats, but some do require FFmpeg to be installed on the system. The safest choice is WAV files, which are supported out of the box. Playing audio is as simple as loading the audio file and calling the play function on the object that's provided. Piglet offers more advanced functionality for playing 3D and spatial audio, but I'll save these for another video. Having now played around with Piglet, I believe it's the better developer experience when compared to Pygame, and hopefully this video helped to spark your interest in it too. That being said, there are some reasons why Pygame may be the better choice. 
The community around Pygame is much larger than Piglet, which means there are more examples and guides out there on how to use it. Furthermore, with the release of SDL2, Pygame is just as performant as Piglet thanks to the use of hardware acceleration, and so the main differences come down to stylistic choices. Still, even with those in mind, I'm going to keep on with Piglet, and we'll probably be building a game with it soon. If you don't want to miss that video, please make sure to subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.